So uh, I think today um, our topic is talking about the momentum. This will be a new topic and we're going to use the momentum and to uh, study the process of collision. So um, this several weeks, we just uh, talk about the motion. So if we have a motion and linear motion or circular motion or any motion with a non-uniform acceleration, then we have different methods and to solve the displacement time and the velocity. But if the motion is very quick, for example, you have a collision, then uh, it's hard to determine the displacement. And if there's no displacement, but if this collision happened in a very quick time, and how do we calculate the velocity? So the question is, after a collision, what's the velocity of each object? Suppose we have two block, uh, block, and they collide. For example, the left block moved to the right, the right block moved to the left, and they have different speed. Use V1, V2 represent the velocity of each block. Then they collide. Boom. Then after the collision, these two blocks have uh, a new speed. For example, if uh, the left box moved to the left and the right box moved to the right. And let me distinguish these two velocities. So I use prime to represent uh, the velocity after the collision. So before the collision, we know the velocity of each block. And after the collision, we don't know the velocity. So can we solve the velocity? So to answer this question, we need to figure out um, what kind of physics law can we use to determine the velocity after the collision. So let's go back to Newton's second law. The Newton's second law said, if we have a force in the collision, each box will um, get a force from the other box. Okay? So the force on the first block is equal to the mass of the first block times the acceleration of first block. And the same thing, second box uh, has a force. And this force is equal to M2 times A2. Okay. And from the definition of the acceleration, we know acceleration equals to the, uh, the change of the velocity divided by the change of the time. So we can rewrite the first one into a change of the velocity over change time. And the second uh, box and get the same force and the force equal to the M2 change of the velocity for the second block over the time. And we know the initial velocity for the first box is V1 after the collision is V1 prime. And we know the second block, the initial velocity is V2 after the collision, the velocity is V2 prime. So we can replace the change of velocity by using the subtraction of V1 prime and V1, V2 prime and V2. So the first equation is equal to M1, V1 prime minus V1 over the duration, very quick time in the collision. And the second equation is replaced with M2, V2 prime minus V2 over D. Okay, this is the change of the velocity over change of the time. And from the Newton's third law, we know the force on the first block and the force on the second block are a pair force because action and reaction force. The force one and force on the second block 
or action, reaction, fear force. So Newton's third rule said, if the uh, um, action and the reaction pure force, we have magnitude equal each other and the direction goes to opposite. So the first one and the second one, the force on the first one is F1 and the force on the second one is F2 and F1, the magnitude of F1 equals F magnitude of F2 and the direction um, are opposite. So we need a minus sign in front of one of the force. We can define the right direction is positive. So I have minus sign in front of F1. Okay, so let's replace F1 and F2 by using the Newton's second law. We are going to use these two equations to replace F1 and F2. So on the left, we have negative M1, change of the velocity over delta T. And on the right side, we have mass of second block, change of the velocity over delta T. And we find that delta T canceled, right? So eventually we have, and on the left, we have negative M1 V1 prime plus M1 V1 and equals M2 V2 prime plus M2 V2. Okay, let me use a new page. We have minus M1 V1 prime plus M1 V1 equal to M1, uh, hold on. Uh, M2 V2 prime minus M2 V2. Okay, then let's remove the negative sign, right? We move this guy to the right, and then we move this guy to the left. Then we get all the term is positive. That's M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equal M2 M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. Okay, let's um, read this equation. So we have all the parameters on the left is before the collision. Because the velocity of V1 and V2, so all of these parameters are before the collision. And on the right side, we have V1 prime and V2 prime, that's the velocity after the collision. So that means during the collision, there is a parameter conserved. That's the sum up of mass multiplied by a velocity. So we define a new parameter. We define um, mass times the velocity as a very important parameter. We call this uh, multiplication as and uh, momentum. And we use capital J to represent. And because the velocity is a vector, so we have M V is a vector. So momentum is also a vector. The direction of the momentum is the direction of the velocity. Then we get a conservation. Fine. And let me see. Um, what we have is the total momentum. The total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum after the collision. So if we have many box, so the mass will be the first box times the first velocity and plus the second box 
times the second velocity, then plus the third box times the third velocity, so and etc. We just sum up all the momentum before the collision and after the collision. Then the momentum conserve. So we call this equation as conservation of the momentum. Yeah, right here. So that means before and after the collision, and what we have is the mass times the V. This term is a conservative uh, term. And if we want to solve the velocity, we just need to sum all of the momentum before the collision, then they should equivalent to the momentum after the collision. Then let's figure out which velocity we don't know, which velocity we know, and we can solve the velocity we don't know. Okay, so, so far I just gave you a derivation of the momentum conservation. And to help you digest what's going on here, I gave you an example. That's a homework and problem. You can find the homework due yesterday, I think. You're standing on a sheet of ice and it covers a football stadium and there is no friction, okay? No friction. And a friend threw you a 0.6 kilogram ball that is traveling horizontally at 10 meter per second. Your mass is 70 kilogram. If you catch the ball, what at what speed do you and the ball move up the world? Okay, so that means if I draw a diagram, that will be a ball traveling horizontally with a speed of 10 meter per second and hit you. Okay, so before the collision, you have momentum on the ball and you are standing at rest, so you don't have momentum. After the collision, both of you gain a momentum and you will be pushed by the ball. So you and the ball has the same velocity. And we are looking for the velocity after the collision. So let's figure out at the momentum before you get the ball and after you catch the ball. So before you catch the ball, before you catch the ball, the total momentum equal to the momentum total momentum. equals to the momentum of the ball, that's uh, 10 meter per second times the, the mass. That's 0.6, right? 0.6. And the unit is kilogram meter per second. And plus the momentum of the person is zero. And after you catch the ball, the total momentum equals to the momentum of the ball, that's a mass, the 0.6 times the velocity, the velocity we don't know, we're going to solve the velocity, plus the velocity of the person, right? That's a 70 kilogram times the velocity, V prime. And after the person catch the ball, I just assume they share the velocity. So the velocity are the same, so I use V prime, represents the velocity of the ball and the velocity of the person. So we know the conservation of the momentum. That means the momentum before the collision equals the momentum after the collision. Before the collision, the total momentum is six kilogram meter per second equal to, and the total mass 70.6 very V prime. So we can solve the velocity after the person catch the ball. That will be, if I check. That will be 0 0.058 of 85 meter per second. 85 meter per second. 
that's a, a velocity after the person catch the ball. Okay, the part B, if the ball hits you and bounces off, so afterward, it's moving horizontally at eight meters per second in the opposite direction. So bounce off. This is before the collision. After the collision, this ball move to the left with eight meters per second. And at the same time, the person has another speed. And the V prime is on the so we are going to solve what's the speed after the collision. So because the ball bounces back, so the person should gain a greater velocity. So the velocity should be larger than the 0 0.085 meter per second. This is the first uh, uh, result you should have. The V prime is larger. Then how do we get the larger velocity? So in, at the beginning, before you catch the ball, the momentum is the same, doesn't change. But after the collision, the ball has a different velocity. So we're going to replace this term. So after the collision, we have the total momentum equal to the velocity times the, uh, the mass. The mass of 0.6 velocity is minus eight because the direction change. So I use minus sign from here and plus. And the mass of the person and the velocity of the person. Okay, then they are equal to the momentum at the beginning. That's a six kilogram meter per second. Then we can solve the velocity after the collision. That's a point 54 meter per second. So you can find this is larger than this one. Okay, let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? Um, yeah. Whenever oh, yeah. the object moves in the opposite direction, do we take the velocity as a negative? Here, we take the velocity as negative. Okay, thank you. So I think um, the step-by-step -step summary will be we're going to figure out the total momentum before the collision. Total momentum before the collision. And we are going to write down the total momentum after the collision. Then the equivalent. The equivalent. Then we can solve the velocity. So that's a step-by-step -step procedure. And very straightforward. And let's do another example. And mass 55, and the skateboard is five kilogram weight. And in a straight line, speed is 4.5. A friend standing on the balcony above you drops a sack and 2.5 kilogram. And what's the new speed? Well, you hold the sack. Okay, think about that. You have speed in uh, 4.5 and you have a basket here and your friend drop something into your basket okay vertically then in this case what will change during this move uh, during this process the mass increase the total mass of you and the sack and the basket increase If the mass increase, that will change the momentum because the momentum is mass times the velocity. So if the mass increase, the velocity will decrease if the momentum conserves, right? So let's figure out before you hold the sack and after you hold the sack, what's the momentum? What's the momentum before? Let's see. Uh, the total mass is uh, 55 plus 5 kilogram. 
that's the weight, this is the mass of U and the skateboard. And times the velocity, that's 4.5 meter per second. Right. After you hold the sack, and the mass increase. So the total mass will be 55 plus 5 plus the mass of the sack, 2.5 kilogram. And the new speed is unknown. So we will use V prime to represent the velocity. Then this two moment equivalent. Equivalent, so we can solve the velocity. The velocity we get, uh, hold on, what's the velocity? The velocity will be 4.3. Okay, so you might ask a question. And uh, since the sack was dropped vertically, how can it affect the horizontal motion? And somebody explained this to me. You have a horizontal speed, you hold a basket, and something dropped from above and into the basket. And why is the vertical motion will impact the horizontal motion. Why? Why velocity decrease? So think about that. After you hold the sack, the sack and you share the same speed. You will have the same speed. That means the sack in the boss kit will have a horizontal speed. This is the speed of the sac. That means the sac is accelerated in the horizontal direction. In the vertical way, we know it doesn't change. But when the sac drops into the box, then this box is going to accelerate this ball. Because you're going to accelerate the sac and the person will lose some momentum. So that's why and uh, the person will lose speed, the speed decrease, because some of speed, some of the energy is put into the sac. The sac gains speed. So the speed of the person decrease. Okay, that's the reason. And third question, now you try to read yourself of the actual weight by throwing the sack straight up. And what will be your speed while the sack in the air? Okay, you threw it away and you can find that the vertical speed will not impact the horizontal speed. So let's think about that. You threw it away. Before you threw it away, the total momentum is 55 kilogram, 5 kilogram, 2.5 uh, kilogram is the total mass multiplied by the velocity. Velocity is 4.3. Okay. And you threw it away and threw up. And the sack, if the sack doesn't have horizontal speed, then the mass just decreases. So we have 55 plus 5 kilogram times the velocity new velocity. Then you will find that the new velocity goes back to 4.5 meter per second. So that means the momentum come back and uh, the velocity come back to the 4.5. And now 
you can think about that. If this sack has a horizontal speed and it just goes up, goes up and with the same speed and in the horizontal direction, then the velocity will not change. You will get a 4.3. But uh, if we take the ground as a reference and the sack has zero speed, then the speed of the person will goes back. Okay, this is uh, uh, the problem 8.29. Do we have any question? Okay, if you don't have a question, let me move to another problem. This is a problem we are going to use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy to solve. So we have many process. Let's do this step by step. So there is a box drop down and heat another box. Then they stick together. Then these two box move up and stop somewhere. And we're uh, looking for the height after this two box stop. Okay, so think about that. And we have two box. This two box uh, have three process. Okay. The first one, the first part, we can separate this motion into three parts. First part, the first box drops down. And in this process, we know energy conserved because there's no friction. You know the friction, no friction. So energy conserved. Second one, after the first box drops, they collide. So second one is collision. And during the collision, we know momentum conserved. Third one, when they stick together, they move up, right? So two box moves up. And in this process, we know energy concern. Okay, so we have three steps. Then we are going to write an equation for each step then we are looking for the connection between each uh, equations. So first one, first box drops, energy conserved. So in this process, the energy of the box has uh, potential energy from the gravity and the kinetic energy. So when the box drops down, the box lose potential energy, but again, uh, kinetic energy. So how much energy does it lose? It lose if the height we know is R. So the lose potential energy is MGR. Okay, this is the first process. This is energy it lose. And how much energy does it get? It gains the kinetic energy, one and a half mv squared minus the initial kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy is zero because it says the box released from rest, so minus zero. So we can solve the velocity of the first box when it drops down before the collision, that will be two gr square root. And you find that this is um, independent of the mass. The mass just cancels. Okay, this is the velocity of the first box before the collision. Then let's move to the second step, the collide. So before the collision, the momentum is equal to the total mass of the first box times the velocity of the first box plus the momentum of second box. The second box is at rest, so that's zero. 
Then after the collision, the total momentum is equal to the total mass of these two blocks because they stick together. So the total mass is 2m times the new velocity. And these two velocity are equivalent. So we have the new velocity equal to one half initial velocity. Because these two are equivalent. So mass just cancels. So we have the V prime equal to one half of square root two gr. That's the velocity after the collision for both of the of the box. Then third step, the two box move up. If the two box move up, and we have energy conserve, they will gain potential energy and lose kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy they lose is one half total mass, two m, velocity square, velocity square, v prime square. And the energy they gain is the potential energy is mgr or the mgh or mgy. Y is what we're looking for. So the total mass is 2m g y. Okay. We're looking for y. So to solve y, you will find that the mass also canceled. So the y equal to 2g v prime square. V prime square is uh, this one. So we get, uh, how to say that, one half g r over 2g that's 1 over 4g uh hold on one, 1 over 4r do you have any question question time if you don't have question i have a question for you let's think about the energy the potential energy at the beginning when this box drops before this box drop the total potential energy is m g r okay after this stop at the highest point let's calculate the potential energy the potential energy at the second place is the total mass times the g times the height height is one over four and you find the total energy is 1 over 2 mgr. And this two potential and doesn't equal. Why? The energy doesn't conserve. And where does the energy loss? Somebody tell me. The energy doesn't conserve. Why the energy doesn't conserve? Is it because they stick together after collision? Uh, they stick together and why they stick together and that will cause energy loss. So you said they stick together and why stick together will cause energy loss. So let's think about that. Um, let's calculate the energy before the collision and after the collision. Before the collision, the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy of the first box, one half mv squared. That's before the collision. And the second box has zero kinetic energy, so we plus zero. So after the collision, they have the same speed. So we have one half two mass times the velocity. Velocity is here. Velocity is equal to one half of the initial velocity. Initial velocity here, because we have mass times V equal to two mass V prime. So the new velocity equal to one half V. So 
one half v squared. Then you get this is equal to how much is uh, four uh, one over four a quarter and v squared. So you can check the kinetic energy before the collision and after the collision. Before the collision, the total energy is one over two mv squared. After the collision, the total energy is one over four. So there is a quarter mv squared difference. So that's why the kinetic energy, or the potential energy, are different. So that means the collision is not a process that the energy conserve. So collision, collision, um, hold on. Collision, in the process of collision, the energy doesn't conserve or doesn't always conserve. Be careful. When you say collision, don't use the energy conservation. Then this is the three examples I show you today, how to use the conservation of the momentum to solve the speed. Then the next question is, uh, do we know um, the force during the collision? Uh, how to calculate the force? What's the collision force? We know this process is very quick. The collision is very quick, but even if it's quick, there should be a force. And how large the force is? Let's go back to the Newton's second law. The Newton's second law says, if we have a net force, that's a collision force, this is a collision, the force equals the mass times the acceleration. The acceleration we know at the beginning, the fall at uh, the velocity goes in this way. And after the collision, the velocity goes in this way. So if the velocity change, there should be an acceleration. So we have mass times the change of velocity. So we use velocity after the collision minus the velocity before the collision divided by the quick duration, delta t. Delta T is very small, very quick. Okay. So then we can use this equation to calculate the force. And you can find that if I put the delta T on the left side, we will have the force times the small duration equal to the M V prime minus M V. This is the difference of the momentum the change of the moment. So this is the change of the momentum. So that means if we want to know the force, we just need to calculate the change of the momentum, then divide by the time. So force equal to the change of the momentum right by the quick duration, then we get the force. And the direction of the force is equal to the direction of the change of the momentum. So let's do an example. Uh, how do we calculate the force? There is a bat strikes a baseball and before the impact, the ball is traveling horizontal to the right. Traveling horizontal to the right is 40 meters per second. When they leave the bat, the ball is traveling to the left with the angle horizontal 30 degree. And the velocity is 52 meters per second. And it says this duration is 1.75 milliseconds. Very, very quick. Find the horizontal and the vertical component of the average force. Calculate the force. So we need to figure out what's the change of the momentum during this strike. Okay. 
So let's do the vertical first. Vertical. Before the collision and after the collision. Before the strike, we know in the horizontal direction, there's no speed. So that's zero. Momentum. Momentum equal to zero. And the momentum after the strike will be, there is a Y component in the Y direction. So we have 52 meter per second multiplied by sine 30 degree times the mass. The mass is 1.145 kilogram. Okay, so that's uh, uh, momentum after the collision, after the strike. So the change of the momentum is equal to the momentum after strike minus the momentum before the strike. That will be 52 sine 30 degree times the mass. Okay. Then the force in the y direction will be equal to the change of the momentum in the y direction over the time, 1.75 millisecond. As I have 10 to the negative three second at millisecond. So we can calculate the, uh, the force. How large is the force? The force, mm -hmm. let me check the solution. In the y direction, that's a 2150 meter. Okay, that's the vertical direction. Let's do the horizontal. The horizontal direction, let's see, the momentum before the collision is a 40 meter per second at the speed. So we have mass times 40. That's the momentum in the X before. So after the collision, the direction um, of the momentum in the x direction goes to the opposite, right? So we have jx prime equal to mass times the velocity. The velocity is negative because uh, it says hmm, traveling to the left. Right? So we need a negative sign. We have 25 cosine 30 degrees. So that means the change of the momentum in the x direction will be x prime minus jx. So we have mass minus 52 cosine 30 degree minus mass 40. So the force of x equal to the change of momentum in the x direction over the time then we can calculate that's the negative 7050 Newton. And you find that there's a negative sign in front of, of the force. That means the force, the direction of the force goes to the left. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have a question, I give you a short summary to stop our class. And to calculate, today we talk about the collision problem. Collision. collision is a process that energy doesn't conserve. So energy doesn't always conserve. So I use always, that means sometimes to conserve, sometimes don't conserve, it doesn't guarantee. So um, you need to make sure if the energy is a conserve, but the most of the time it doesn't conserve. So this is very important. And if it doesn't conserve, we cannot use any conservation equation to calculate the speed. We have to use Momentum conservation. Okay. 
momentum conservation is uh, a process we calculate the total momentum before the collision and they should equal to the total momentum after the collision. Then we can use this to calculate the speed. Then to calculate the force, we need to calculate the change of the momentum. Two, get the force. We need to use the change of the momentum. Divide by the change time. The change of momentum is equal to the momentum after the collision minus the momentum before the collision. And we need to use the vector subtraction to do this calculation. This is how we get the force during the collision. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk today. Uh, if you don't have a question, I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Uh, I found someone asking me a question in the chat. And do we have a quiz today? No, we don't have a quiz. You're good to go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you don't have other questions, I'm good.